Let's take a look at this rational equation. Got 3 over x plus 2 minus 5 over x minus 2 is equal to 4x over x squared minus 4. Now our first uh, step is to get rid of parentheses. Don't have any. Second step is to get rid of fractions. Um, in order to get rid of the fractions, we have to factor all of our denominators. Well, x plus 2 we can't do anything with, x minus 2 we can't do anything with, but x squared minus 4, two terms of minus ring it, is the difference of two squares. So we get 3 over x plus 2 minus 5 over x minus 2 equals 4x over x plus 2 times x minus 2. <coughs> now to figure out what our LCM is, let's start with our first factor the x plus 2. Now we're looking for the greatest number of x plus 2's in a single denominator. There's one here, none here, one here. So the greatest number of x plus 2's in a single denominator is 1. Then let's go to our next factor, the x minus 2. I'm looking for the greatest number of x minus 2's in a single denominator. There's none here, there's one here, there's one here. So the greatest number of x minus 2's in a single denominator is 1. So our LCM will be x plus 2, x minus 2. And that's what we multiply everything by. We'll multiply it by the 3 over x plus 2. We're going to multiply it times our second fraction. And I'll put it after it. It doesn't matter whether you put before it or after it. I put it after it so it wouldn't get messed up with the negative that was there. And then I multiply it times a fraction on the right side. There we go. Okay. Now over here, the x plus 2 is going to cancel. Over here, the x minus 2's will cancel, and over here, the x plus 2's will cancel, and the x minus 2's will cancel. So let's write down what we have left before we multiply them together. We got 3 times x minus 2 minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 4x. So 3 times x is 3x, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, negative 5 times x is negative 5x, negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. No matter where you are in algebra, you should combine together like terms, combine together numbers. Here we got 3x minus 5x. That gives us negative 2x. And here we got negative 6 and negative 10, which gives us negative 16. Now step 3 says get everything with a variable on one side and numbers on the other. So I'm going to take this... Um, 4x, move it to the left side, I'll take negative 16, move it to the right side. Anytime you move anything across equals, the sign changes, so the 4x becomes a negative 4x, and the negative 16 becomes a positive 16. Combine to get a like terms at any step. Negative 2x, negative 4x is negative 6x. And step 4. Divide both sides by the number in front of your x. Well, the number in front of our x is a negative 6, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 6. And we've got x is equal to negative 16 over 6. Both those are divisible by 2, so that gives us uh, 8 thirds. So our answer is negative 8 thirds. Now, I say it's negative 8 thirds, there's no way that's going to cause a 0, my original problem. If I put that in for x, negative 8 thirds plus 2, I don't know what it is, but it's not 0. Negative 8 thirds minus 2, I don't know what that is, but it's not 0. And same with this over here. Um, the values that cause us problems is if I'd come up with an x equals negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 would give us a 0 up here. Or positive 2, 2 minus 2 would give us a 0. But this, this problem, this answer is fine.